Hey guys, so yesterday somebody was asking, am I going to make more videos on the whole transgender video? And I said not for a while, at which point I listed every single video I was planning on making over a period spanning for over a month in advance. By the way, if you didn't know, I upload proper videos every Wednesday and Saturday, with some random crap in between that doesn't take much effort. But then of course something insane happened. Senpai noticed us, sort of. Sean tweeted out that somebody else had tweeted out my response video, and I got a whole load of attention. I had always been planning on doing a video where I respond to the negative comments, as well as another response video where I talk about some of the comments I agree with and give my thoughts on them, but I was putting it off. And since there are now a heck of a, a lot of comments all of a sudden, I guess I got to respond to them. By the way, Something I noticed is that I'd go back into onto the video and refresh and see comments that were several days old, which hadn't shown up the first time. So I'm not sure why that is, but if you wrote a critical comment and I haven't addressed it, then that could be why. Also, at the time of scripting this, it is Sunday night, so I won't be responding to any comments after that right now. Finally, I went ahead and turned off all notifications on my YouTube and probably won't turn them back on for a while, because with the notifications on, I was just getting a steady stream of hate, and I prefer to just wait until things calm down a bit. Now, first of all, since I'm making a video responding to critical comments, we should start by responding to the objectively funniest comment, which is from this guy, who accused me of censoring critical comments. LMAO at TERFs congratulating each other in the comments. I'm guessing sane people comments don't last very long. Okay, so you have to realize that this was one of the first comments I got before the onslaught of genderists. So this guy basically arrived before everyone else and said, wow, it sure is suspicious that there aren't any critical comments here. And you might think that this guy can't be blamed for not realizing that there were plenty of uncensored critical comments to come if it weren't for the fact that I had a critical comment pinned. Glad you finally uploaded the second half so I can get around to arguing against the whole thing. Before I do though, I want to point out that the news story you cited at the end about mermaids is provably false, and then he cites a news article that does discredit one of my points. And I'm actually not going to respond to this because it's right. I made a mistake, and one of my points was discredited, so I pinned the comment so everyone could see that my point was inaccurate. And yet this guy still accused me of censoring those who disagree with me when I had literally pinned a comment from somebody who disagreed with me, and 47 people upvoted that comment by somebody who disagreed with me, accusing me of censoring those who disagree with me. Did you not twig something might be up when you were able to upvote the comment, guys? Anyway, one brief note on censorship. I don't do it. However, I realize that I'm coming from a place of male privilege when I say that. I'm being a free speech bozo with a sticks and stones may break my bones attitude. Of course, I fully understand that for women and minority groups, hate speech directed at them in a male, in a white male dominated culture can be truly harmful. And with that in mind, if you comment on my video and people start attacking you, I'm sorry. And if you want me to, I will delete those comments. Uh, here's an example of that. See, this is why our male allies need to speak up. I, for one, have lost patience with the likes of Sean. Their support of women is so thin that they can't see past their own penis. They are so con they are so convinced of their own opinion, they spew hate at women who agree with 99% of what they say. They can't see the automat the automat they, they can't see they automatically prioritize their opinions of male people and dismiss those of women with little thought. I can't help but think it's due to their internalized misogyny. I mean, why on earth would a male want to lose their male privilege and become an icky girl? Must be serious, huh? Who in their right mind would want to be a girl? Ew. Also, you have the non-binary gender fluid types, see Rollins and Coffin, who want to shirk their male privileges and distance themselves from any responsibility. Thanks for the measured response, King. I'm too angry. Uh, thank you for that comment, by the way. And I'm so sorry that you had these pricks replying to you, calling you a bigot, hateful, angry. Side note, I remember back in the day when progressives defended the right of people to be angry, and it was only reactionaries that would use somebody's anger as a reason to discredit them. But whatever, times have changed. Uh, somebody telling you to fuck yourself, this death threat, yes, a literal death threat, and finally somebody making a penis joke, because Sean can't see past his own dick, thus implying he has a massive penis. Yes. 
That's where we're at right now. Haha. <laughs> what you said could be interpreted to imply Sean has a big penis. I mean, if you read the difference between the comments in the main thread and then the comments in the replies, there is a marked difference. I've read every comment I could find and will display every comment I could find, and they're not nice, but they're not awful either. By contrast, the people replying to comments are engaging in death threats. It almost seems as if there's some difference between me and the people in the comments that makes these men treat us differently. By the way, the answer is that the people in the comments are women. The reason why a woman who just politely offered her support for what I'm doing is being faced with death threats, while I, the person who actually made the video, is not, is because these people are coming from a mentality that has never been about anything other than attacking and silencing women. Anyway, there are basically three reasons why I don't censor comments like this. Firstly, because it means that I can say I don't censor at all. Secondly, because it shows that I'm not making up all this harassment and toxicity. And thirdly, for the substantially less noble reason that I can't be bothered. However, these three reasons, as good as they are, could all be trumped by somebody saying, hey, could you remove the vitriol from these comments, please? Like I say, I'm coming at this from a position of white male privilege, where being threatened by words isn't relevant to my life experiences. However, if any woman has a problem with a comment, let me know. And if the woman in general who watch my content would rather I clamp down on these on things like this, then let me know. I have actually been considering outright deleting any comment featuring the word turf going forward, although I'll probably reply warning people that I'm going to do so. So if they want their comment to stand, they then have the opportunity opportunity to edit out the slur. However, since it's pretty obvious that I currently don't censor people's comments, another user decided to have another go uh, accusing me of manipulating the comments. You need to heart favorite more comments. There are still a few that explain how things really are, and your fragile turf ego can't handle that, can it? Okay, so first of all, no matter how many comments there are, my decision to favorite the comments I agree with uh, and like doesn't get rid of the comments that disagree with me. So me favoriting certain comments doesn't actually affect the critical comments at all. The reason I favorite so many comments is just because it seems like a nice thing to do, to show people who make the effort to show their support that I appreciate it. And these guys aren't finished. By God, they're going to accuse me of manipulation somehow. And since they can't find any evidence of it in the comments, now they're going to attack me for not directing people to Sean's video. This video is laughable. Sean doesn't say, check the video first for virtue signaling or whatever, but so that you can know he's not taking other people's words out of context. It's telling you don't want people to watch his video. I find this audience viewer relationship rather strange. For my part, I'd expect that people who watch my videos would just know that I'm not going to twist somebody's words and take them out of context. If you feel the need to watch the video I'm responding to in order to be sure I'm not misrepresenting it, then I'm not sure why you trust anything I say. What irritates me about Sean's habit of doing it is that everybody knows that people aren't going to watch the original video to make sure people aren't misrepresenting it. He knows his audience isn't going to do it, and his audience knows they aren't going to do it. So it sort of literally is virtue signaling. He's saying to check out their videos because apparently giving exposure to alt-right YouTubers is a good thing because civility politics. But Sean knows his audience won't go watch Stefan Molyneux's video, just like I know my audience won't go watch Sean's video. So basically, despite implying that I'm being dishonest, I'm actually being a great deal more honest than Sean. We'll get to the second part of that comment in a moment, by the way. Now, the next comment is the first really long comment, so I can't address it all now. Not encouraging people to go see Sean's video is a very bad sign about your response, because as it turns out, you strawman him as much as you can. Anybody who watches this idiot, go watch Sean's video to get his arguments in full. Okay, so this guy is claiming that I didn't misrepresent Sean's video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this guy is claiming that I misrepresented Sean's video. And you'd think that the rest of this, of his very long comment, would be t uh, taking, say, an example of where I misrepresented Sean and showing what Sean actually said. But as it happens, he doesn't do that. So I'm going to leave this comment aside until later. I guess the only way you can know whether or not I misrepresented Sean's video is by watching it yourself, since all these people claiming I misrepresented Sean's video can't actually provide any examples of how I misrepresented it. But let's be honest, you aren't going to watch Sean's video, and besides, I don't want you to, because irritating Sean's fans is funny. Now, we get on to the next category of comments, the you are a transphobe comments. First of all, we have the comment we left aside for later. Also, just be brave and state that you think trans women aren't women. 
You dance around it by saying person with a penis as distinct from women, but once about every two minutes, about once every two minutes, but we're not fooled. Just admit that your feminism excludes trans people. You're hardly radical, though. So here's the thing. I stated the reason that I refer to trans-identified males as persons with a penis rather than as men in my videos. Oh, in my video, it's because by doing so, I would be framing the discussion in my favor. When talking about whether or not a person with a penis must necessarily be a man and must necessarily not be a woman, to call that person a man is to address the question with a framework that already assumes a particular answer. That is why I use the term person with a penis instead of man, and I made no effort to hide the fact that I personally don't think trans-identified males or trans women are women. So basically, I was trying to use neutral language because I think neutral language is a good idea when approaching a debate. If I use language that presupposes my position, that's not very good. However, this person has confused me using gender, critical, uh, gender neutral language in the interest of framing the debate in more neutral terms, with me trying to trick people into thinking that I'm not gender critical. Not sure how that was supposed to work. However, this comment is right about one thing. I have been deceptive. You see, there is another reason why I tend to use neutral language when discussing transgender issues, which I've not revealed previously and essentially lied about by omission. The other secret reason why I use neutral language when referring to trans people is because I don't like to offend trans people. This comment here is implying that I secretly really want to call trans women men, but for nefarious reasons, I pretend to be neutral on the issue. In fact, the opposite is true. I really want to call trans women women, particularly, uh, partially that's a force of habit from having been a genderist feminist for so long. If I didn't redraft and edit my video scripts at all, I think about half the time that I refer to a trans person, I'd refer to them by their preferred pronouns, because instinctively, that's what I'm in the habit of doing. But aside from it being a force of habit, I also don't like upsetting trans people. I don't want trans people to watch my videos and feel upset or angry or discriminated against. Now, at this point, you might say, well, if you don't want that, just call them by their preferred pronouns and accept that they are the gender they identify as. But when one's beliefs about the way things are offend people, there's really no way, no way out of that apart from reaching some kind of compromise between being kind and compassionate and being ideologically consistent. And in that case, my solution is to tend to use gender-neutral language. You see, this is the reason why I really reject being called a transphobe. Because if I'm a transphobe, none of this makes sense. It doesn't make sense why I tie myself in ideological knots trying to avoid offending trans people. Why do I not think transgender people are the gender they claim to be? It's quite simply because I have been convinced of a particular position on gender politics and gender identity. And unless somebody gives me an actual reason to change my position, I'm going to continue to hold to that position. In the meantime, I don't want trans people to feel bad watching my videos as much as I can avoid that as possible. I'm afraid I can't really be the villain you want me to be. I can't revel in the misery of trans people when I think that trans people could be watching content, my content, and that my words would make them feel upset or angry or any kind of anguish. All I can feel is sadness, and for that reason, apart from a video I've already, already recorded, I think from this point onwards, I'm going to continue using neutral language. I'm sorry, I know that you, Mr. Commenter, uh, want me to be ideologically consistent. I'd also imagine a great deal of my gender-critical subscribers would like that. But I'm sorry, as much as I can help it, I can't be the reason somebody feels worse about themselves. And if that means using neutral language instead of outright using gendered language to refer to people who do, who, do I not do, <laughs> who do not identify with that gender, that's what I'll do. Anyway, I love trans people, but I don't think their existence is valid. What the hell does it mean to suggest somebody's existence is invalid? It would be more accurate to say I believe that trans people misrepresent themselves. There is nothing wrong with a trans person existing, but when they decide that their being trans results in them becoming another gender, then I simply say I disagree. Sean's content was great until he made a video defending the people I don't like. Also, I'm not a transphobe because I say so. Okay, so I want to address two things. Firstly, uh, I don't dislike transgender people. I disagree with transgender people. Understanding the difference between dislike and disagreement would do you wonders. Secondly, regarding me saying Sean's content was great, 
there was a reason why I started off by complimenting Sean's content, and it wasn't just to attempt to preemptively validate my criticism of him. My point was to show that Sean's content was good, not because Sean himself is some kind of intellectual powerhouse, but rather because usually Sean has the luxury of being right. He makes most of his videos arguing against right-wing lunatics, so honestly his content is only great because he is correct. The minute that he stops being right, as he was in his most recent video, his content is awful. By the way, I apply the same criticism to myself. I am not a good debater. A good debater is somebody who is really good at defending a position, and that can be proven by their ability to defend a position that they disagree with. However, I am not a good debater, because the only reason I can defend the positions I hold to is that they are right. If they weren't, my videos would be as bad as Sean's was. That's what I meant when I said that I liked Sean's content, and why I am no longer as fond of Sean's content. Because the only reason Sean's content is good is because it was parroting ideas I agreed with. And now that I see, uh, I've seen him argue against the position I actually hold to, well, I have no problem with trans people. So I'll make a video advocating against trans rights without ever referencing either scientific studies, studies or the lived experiences of trans people. Also, he just hand waves the genuine prejudice against LGBT people by claiming people with penises are only oppressed because women are oppressed and they want to be women. I have nothing against men, but I would still happily make a video advocating against men's rights. As for me not referencing any studies, where do you think it would have been helpful for me to reference studies? I'm not in the business of referencing studies just to show off, I reference them when they're relevant. As for the lived experiences of trans people, again, it wasn't relevant to the discussion. I'd have, I'd have a lot more respect for transphobes if they owned up to who they are. You are denying somebody's identity based on a belief that you aren't ready to question. I mean, that's your prerogative, and you don't have to question all of your beliefs, but please allow us to accurately describe you. You don't want to beat up trans people for existing. Good for you. Have a cookie. Not all racists want concentration camps either. Except it's not just I don't want to beat up trans people, is it? I don't want to cause trans people the slightest inconvenience or upset as much as I can, within the bounds of what I believe to be true. I do not hate trans people. I do not fear trans people. I am not uncomfortable around trans people. I do not dislike trans people. I am not the most mildest of mildly miffed about trans people. Take the most minor negative emotion you can think of, and even that is not minor enough to describe my transphobia, because the most accurate way to describe my transphobia is non-existent. This is the extent of my unbridled hatred for trans-identified males. I don't believe they are women. Now, saying somebody isn't a woman is not an insult. At worst, it is factually inaccurate. If I say Daisy Ridley is not a woman, then I'm wrong. I'm not insulting her, but I'm wrong. And if the genderists are right about transgender identity politics, then when I say that Caitlyn Jenner isn't a woman, I'm wrong. That's it. Wrong. I'm not insulting Jenner. I'm not attacking Jenner. In fact, you know how I was saying that instinctively I refer to trans people by their preferred pronouns, and if I didn't edit these scripts, I'd probably refer to them by such pronouns about 50% of the time. Well, I just called Jenna a her in my original edit of this script. The only thing that allegedly makes me a transphobe is that when a transgender person says, I'm a woman because I identify as a woman, I say, I don't agree with your underlying theory of gender. That criticism does not come from a place of hatred, fear, or even mild discomfort. It comes from a position which is wholly academic. Secondly, this person positions me as unwilling to have my beliefs on this issue challenged, ignoring the fact that it's pretty undeniable given even the smallest, small amount of people who have known me throughout my time on YouTube, that I was pro-trans gender identity politics. I mean, again, I literally called gender critical people Nazis in a ContraPoints comments uh, section. So either that was part of a massive long con to appear a year and a half later and start pushing a gender critical ma message, or perhaps I have adopted the gender critical position after questioning my beliefs. Given that I quite clearly have adopted the gender critical position after being instinctively opposed to it, and critical of it, it's ridiculous to characterize me, categorize me as now only holding to that gender critical position because I'm willing, unwilling to think about it or have it challenged or listen to objections. I'm going to make a video relatively soon about how I became gender critical, but this misrepresentation is ridiculous. Speaking of being ridiculous, I'm not only a transphobe, I am apparently a conservative. In fact, on Twitter, somebody was calling me a Nazi, which I will address in my next video. Go join the Conservatives. I assume this is talking about the conservative sphere of YouTube, rather than the party. I know this might be hard to imagine, but I have some areas where I overlap with the Conservatives 
and a lot of areas where I overlap with progressives, and it wouldn't really make sense for me to be wholly part of either sphere, although if Sargon of Akkad gave me a shout out to Mario, I'd say, thanks Sargon, I still disagree with you on a whole bunch of stuff, but thanks. And sure, if any conservative YouTuber was able to look past all the reasons I disagree with them, and have a friendly dialogue with me, or give me a shout out or something like that, then I'd say that reflects very well on them. But given that I just have over 300 subscribers right now, I don't see myself being on the verge of joining either sphere in any meaningful sense. Ben Shapiro, wearing a bad feminist costume, makes sure to say facts don't care about your feelings in part two, please. I like this one because, again, it totally mischaracterizes my history. It implies that I'm a conservative who has taken up feminism as a means to spread my views about transgender people, when in fact I am a feminist and have been for a good half a decade at this point, and have been gender critical for more than a year of that time. So again, if I'm secretly somebody similar to Ben Shapiro, pretending to be a feminist, this was a heck of a long con. So, okay, now we sort of get into the actual arguments. Starting with the comments concerning me saying that I don't have a problem with somebody's decision to be trans. Decision to be trans? That's like saying decision to be gay. And yet in the same video, you said if something seems inconsistent or hypocritical, it's because you've misunderstood something. Your reason, reasoning is consist, inconsistent right off the bat. Unless you think being gay is a choice, in which case, yikes. Okay, so first of all, real simple explanation here. When I say decision to be trans, I was meaning to say the decision to express oneself as trans outwardly. Of course, body dysmorphia is not a choice. Just briefly, somebody else commented, did I misunderstand you, or did you imply at the end of the video that being gay was some kind of rejection of social pressures, as in a choice? Again, same thing. Same sex desire is not a choice. However, somebody can choose to give in to that social pressure and live their lives as a straight person, either permanently or for the, a period of time. Many people do this, and it's one of the many examples of discrimination faced by gay people all across the world and throughout history. By contrast, nowadays, many people choose to be gay in what then that they choose to weather the objections of conservatives and act on their homosexuality. Returning back to the original comment, I'd imagine the same applies to trans people. Gender dysphoria is not a choice, but some, out of fear of expressing themselves, choose to not act on their uh, gender dysphoria and don't outwardly express themselves in gender non-conforming ways. When I say I don't have a problem with their decision to be trans, I'm saying I don't have a problem with them expressing themselves in gender non-conforming ways. I hope that's clear. And again, I'll address the rest of that comment a bit later. And then we get this. Wow, that's fucking disappointing. Fuck me for choosing to be trans, I guess. Yeah? Okay, fuck you too, mate. Comments like this make me feel such sadness in the depths of my heart. I just want to say that I hope that whoever you are, your life is fantastic. I'm sure my life, as somebody who is gender conforming, is impossibly easier than yours. So I'm in no position to take offence at your anger. I would like it if you directed your anger at people who actually have an issue with you and actually have ill will towards you, but if being angry at me helps at all, uh, then I'm happy to help. And then we get, in the midst of this gender-critical versus gender-defender feminism debate, a brave anti-feminist walks into the mix. Okay, look here. First of all, you're responding to a video of a skull wearing sunglasses. How many women have you oppressed? None. Neither have I. I'm pretty sure I probably have oppressed some women. Uh, I've never violated any women either, so try not to go around feeling guilty for violent men. The argument being put forth by all feminists is that we are all guilty because we're the opposite sex. It's somewhat like the Catholic Church telling me I have original sin. I don't buy the argument that I'm part of an evil fraternity of rapists. Trans men have no business in women's bathrooms. Women should not have to deal with this shit. It's not complicated. Most people can agree on that. In the United States, it was the idiot Obama who created these problems. And that pop-up at 435 mark is big red. A very nice looking feminist, in my opinion. Um, what are you doing here, dude? I think this comment might be a joke, but I'm that committed to responding to all the comments, I don't care. Speaking of being committed to responding to all the comments, here are a load of joke comments. Nah, your dad, hashtag thanks Galina. Thanks, Graham. The Mermaid stream donations are now 40% of the way to $500,000. Everyone should go to H Bomber Guy Streamlabs and donate to Mermaids. Hashtag thanks, Graham. This doesn't shine any light on how to beat Beaver Bother. 
thanks Graham, hashtag thanks Graham, hashtag thanks Graham, hashtag 200,000. But how do you beat Beaver Bother? Most of these comments are in reference to the H Bomber Guy fundraiser for the transgender charity Mermaids. And finally, you even have Jenny Kiss in your description. What a lovely individual she is. That says it all. My only real problem with Jenny Kiss is that she hasn't given me a shout out yet. Also, one time she pinned one of my comments on one of her videos and then unpinned it at a later point to pin her own comment. I assume this is what people are referring to when they complain about her. On a more serious note, I think it's because Jenny Kiss, uh, who now goes by the name The American Patriot, is often angry in her videos and tweets. And like I said, it used to be only reactionaries who would use a woman's anger as a reason to dismiss her. But now the progressives have decided to go down that route. Also, as of me writing this video, Jenny just hit 200, uh, 200,000, oh, she wishes, <laughs> just hit 2,000 subscribers. So congratulations to her. I also wish I would hit 200,000 subscribers. Uh, now, now, we come to the actual responses. Again, I think uh, not every single response will be here, as there seem to have be there seem to be several ninja comments that I remember seeing, which have since disappeared, and some other comments I saw which I don't remember ever seeing. Also, even while I've been scripting this video, more comments have come in, so perhaps expect a part two at some point, especially if I get another wave of exposure. Fingers crossed. So let's just take uh, these one at a time. Later on, you talk about women specifically fearing sexual attack from black men. How is that not comparable to specifically fearing trans women? If fearing black men specifically is the result of racism, then fearing trans women specifically must be a result of transphobia. Uh, fearing trans women specifically could well be an example of transphobia. I think since many transgender people are without a doubt autogynophiles and dressing up as a woman is partially sexual for them, Women maybe have some business regarding trans people with slightly more suspicion. However, that's just me wanting to cover all bases. I can neither confirm nor deny whether that is true. In general, I'd say that the issues with trans people come more uh, come more from concerns about people socialized as men rather than a specific fear of trans people. Though if the woman in question has had bottom surgery, that should mean that there isn't any problem at all as far as penises be being used as a tool of oppression are concerned. The problem is the privilege of having been raised with a penis in a phallocentric society. Sean rightly said in his video that it would be silly to act as if losing your penis in, a, in an accident would make you less of a man. I agree, and it's also true to say that it wouldn't undo the effects of having been socialized as a man with a penis. The problem isn't the actual penis itself so much as it's what having ha <laughs> so much as it's what having a penis or ever having had a penis represents. Gender critical feminists aren't worried about hypothetical women showing up in, tra in bathrooms with strap-ons because outside of male-centered porn fantasies that is unlikely to ever happen, and even if it did happen, nothing would come of it. That's because, again, the temporary condition of possessing a phallus is much less significant than the permanent condition of having been socialized as a phallus possessor. This script is longer than the Sean script, and my mouth just isn't isn't made for this much talking. Also. Why are you willing to listen to women, but only some women? Why not listen to trans women and what they have to say? Or if you don't think trans women are women, why not listen to trans men? I couldn't help but notice you didn't mention trans men once. Here's a story. There is a YouTube channel called Amaranth. By the way, if you hate me, then you might want to subscribe to Amaranth because they are a transgender YouTuber who also hates me, and they don't have a lot of subscribers. So if you're watching this and you hate me, then go check out Amaranth. Anyway. So Amaranth was one of my OG subscribers back in the day. They frequently commented on my videos, and they were the closest thing I had to a transgender friend. So one day I uploaded a video, which could basically be summarized as me saying, Hey guys, gender critical feminists are wrong, but we shouldn't view them as being beyond convincing. So we should actually engage them in arguments. And the response I got from this person was for them to implicate me in the deaths of trans people, and then unsubscribe, and we haven't spoken since. Now at that point, I was not gender critical, but that right there encapsulates my experience with trans people. And in fact, I would say that this and similar experiences were what convinced me that transgender politics is toxic and should be opposed. As for trans men, I have never spoken to a trans man, and that's why I'm reluctant to comment on the issue, because shock horror, I'm not the type to comment on issues until I've spoken to people and have been able to gain an informed opinion on the issue. Next, we have the longest comment, which reads, Taking an analogy to the point of absurdity is not refuting it. 
A better analogy, in my opinion, would be would have been with homosexuality. And even with that choice, there would be problems with it because we're talking about two different subjects with their own specificity. Okay, so I'm guessing this is talking about me taking Sean's analogy where he compared women to segregation era whites to its logical conclusion. I'm not really sure what this hypothetical better analogy involving homosexuality would be, so I can't comment. Trans women, along with trans men, were also victim of discrimination if they were open about it, or had to suffer in silence. Also, trans people aren't trans simply because they liked things associated with the opposing gender they were assigned with. Maybe you should go listen to trans people to hear their experience, like you proudly boast you do when confronted with something new, because you really don't sound like you did. Oh, and for the trans reinforced gender binary and stereotype, or whatever bullshit you said, there are non-binary trans folks who may not be trans, who may not, may or may, can't read who may or may not transition themselves. Every single one of them has a right to be comfortable in their own body. Okay, so this is a recurring thing that happens. Uh, Gender-critical feminists talk about the many transgender people who engage in very stereotypical and sometimes hypersexualized expressions of the gender they identify as, and the gender-critical feminists notice this and criticize it as an issue with transgender identity politics. And then it's pointed out that some people do not engage in gender expression of their self-identified gender at all. That's true, but it's a lot like if there was a sudden push for straight men to start identifying as gay, and a lot of the straight men in question were metrosexuals who acted incredibly incredibly camp. Homosexual people would probably say something like, hey, it's not being camp that makes us gay, it's the fact we're attracted to members of the same sex. At which point a very non-camp heterosexual gay would say, that just proves how few trans gays you've spoken to, and how limited your understanding is. Not all trans gays act camp. It's kind of not really the point. One of the problems with discussing transgender issues is that there is so much variation amongst transgender people that nothing really categorically can be said about all transgender people. So therefore, yes, anybody who discusses this issue will find themselves focusing on a particular subset of transgender people because to cover all the different kinds would be incredibly cumbersome. What I did was to go see the gender critical and the trans community. Guess what happened? Trans women are women and trans men are men. Also, trans women or men don't threaten the rights of cis women or cis men. Okay, so this guy accused me of boasting about seeing things from a neutral perspective um, and then does the exact same thing. However, this guy is basically just saying that he checked out both groups of people. Meanwhile, I was actually convinced of transgender identity politics and considered gender critical feminists to be wrong. This guy just checked out both positions. I can say, I can say I've actively believed both positions and held to both positions. So I'm not sure how exactly this guy can tout having simply checked out both positions as a credential, and I can't do the same for having actively and provably been pro-trans identity politics. For the bathroom thing, should trans men go to women's, the women's bathroom? Can't imagine it would make either comfortable. Oh, and the result of this hysteria got cis women harassed because they look too masculine, and trans women assaulted by cis women. So much for the trans oppression, am I right? For the checking genital, his point was that you couldn't know for certain if the person in front of you was trans without checking the content of their pants or skirts, if obviously they're lucky enough to pass. So again, I address this. This all concerns the practicality of enforcing separate gendered bathrooms. I admitted that it might be the case that we cannot enforce this at all. However, just because we can't enforce something doesn't mean that the underlying principles are wrong. Also, trans women can be victims of uh, sexism or rape by a man or a woman for that matter, so being able to get access to groups or spaces to talk about it is not some mad demand, or simply get killed because somebody discovered they are trans. Nobody is saying that gender non-conforming people shouldn't have access to their own support groups, special interest groups, and potentially even safe spaces. However, why should women share their support groups, special interest groups, and safe spaces that they have fought for if they don't want to do so? I may have gotten things wrong in my comment. If that is the case, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brackets not if you're a turf. Thank you. Uh, simply because there was too much stupidity. Thank you. It was late and English isn't my first language. And I'm a cis white guy, if anyone wanted to know considering the subject. I'm glad you're considering the subject. Uh -huh. uh, then we get this guy. Wow, this is really, really bad. 
I feel compelled to throw together a response video to this nonsense, but without it cutting, but with it cutting out halfway, it's hard to really pin down where you're going with this. My th first thought would be, how do you reconcile totally skipping the counter arguments Sean makes about defining gender via genitals, namely those who suffered injury or the very existence of intersex people? Also, your justification for entirely disregarding the experience of trans people on the basis of them being white with penises totally ignores the existence of trans men or any trans person of colour. And good lord, the comment about gender roles at the end are something else that I feel obligated to wait for the second rest uh, for the rest of the video before I address. Uh, regarding having a penis, I thought it was quite clear that I was working on the assumption it is the genitals that one is born with that determine their gender. Rather, regarding intersex people and other complexities surrounding biological sex, I admitted that biological sex tends to be bimodal, tending towards a binary, albeit imperfectly. But uh, said that I was talking about broad societal trends rather than very niche groups. Um, also, I forgot to write this in the comment, but about the um, me saying that trans people are white with penises, I said, you know, mostly. From my experience, like most people who are active uh, transgender advocates are, number one, trans women, so people with penises, and number two, white. That is, you know, Every most or well, the vast majority of transgender activists I'm aware of, draft vast member, vast majority of transgender theorists I'm aware of, are described by that. As for the comments on gender roles, I guess this guy owes me a response video at some point. If womanhood is socially constructed based on biology, wouldn't it mean that society can reframe what womanhood or manhood means? Is your position that trans women aren't women until after society shifts enough to include them in that category? I want to do a video at a later point called Transgender is a Social Construct, where I, ex I explore in detail the relationship between gender being a social construct and transgender identity politics. There's this prevailing idea that something being a social construct means that it's just arbitrary and a linguistic free-for-all. And for that reason, I think many gender-critical feminists reject the idea that gender is a social construct. However, I don't see why that should be the implication of something being a social construct. Race is also undoubtedly a social, social construct. That doesn't mean justify me calling myself black, right? All I'm getting from this is the gun is good, the penis is bad. You say you've become a feminist by listening to women, but I think you've really just skimmed the crib notes. Okay. So that quote is a reference to something I've never seen, but I looked it up and that's what it is. I'm not sure how it translates to an argument. Regarding the second point, firstly, you might think, given that I referenced Against Our Will by Susan Brown Miller, that I've probably read at least a bit of feminist literature. As it happens, I've read a lot of feminist literature. I'm not sure how many dozens of books on feminism you have to have read before you've gone beyond simply skimming the crib notes, but that's a very demanding standard for informed feminism that you're setting there. Also, being pro-trans identity politics is the default feminist position. When you look at pretty much all basic feminists, like the type of people for whom feminism is a series of platitudes, then you'll find that Quite consistently, they are not espousing a gender critical position. It's not like mainstream feminism is gender critical, and then there's a small group of genderist feminists who can be discovered after a decent amount of research. Indeed, the actual reality is the precise opposite way around. Lol, when you started talking about the penis being the instrument of male oppression, that explains a lot about whether where this transphobic, supposedly feminist movement is coming from. Damn supposed feminism coming from the experiences of women. Uh, but gender is based on what you look like. It's a perception of one's expression. The struggles women face is not because of their biology, but because of their perceived womanhood, which transgender women have. Regarding that first point, I'm sh pretty sure most genderist feminists would disagree with you on that just as much as I would. If a woman in the olden days uh, dressed up as a man in order to bypass sexist restrictions against women in certain areas of prof or professions, then she would be perceived by society as a man. Does she therefore become a man for the duration of her time in disguise? As for your point about women's issues, there are a few complications. Firstly, many trans people experience discrimination not as women, but as gender non-conforming people, since they are not passable. By the way, I'm not sure if possible is the politically correct term, so feel free to correct me. But the point is that they are not being discriminated against for being women, but rather for clearly being biological males dressed as women. It's like the old joke, I dressed up as a woman for the first time to see what it's like to experience sexist depression. 
Turns out women get called faggot a lot. Secondly, to say women don't struggle because of their bio... <laughs> it's a funny joke. Secondly, to say women don't struggle because of their biology is definitely wrong, since there are examples of struggles women face that definitely are biological, like, for example, regarding abortion. Uh, thirdly, it has to be said that many transgender people who identify as women actually embrace a lot of misogynistic oppression they receive as they perceive it as validating for their womanhood. But if we ignore all of this, yes, if a transgender person dresses up as a woman and looks convincing as a woman, then people who mistake them for a woman might subject them to misogyny. They're still men, though. They're not unequivocally male, though. This is being made with reference to me saying that the bimodal nature of sex isn't relevant since we're talking about people who are unequivocally male accessing women's spaces. I assume this person is using the old trans women aren't biologically male argument, which is one of the more egregious attacks on linguistic clarity waged by the trans identity politics mob. Since there is no argument presented here, I won't say much. I do, however, have one question. How would people who reject the term biological male prefer to have transgender people who identify as women described? Are we just not allowed to acknowledge the distinction at all between the, them and biological females? Serious question. Five minutes and eight seconds in, and the guy appears to not understand the difference or the fact that there is a difference between what's called toxic masculinity and masculinity. Again, more the penis is evil. Also, the guy goes on about how he and others are stopped from airing their issues, only they got the chance to air their issues in those two Guardian articles, but didn't. Also, lol, calling TERFs, TERFs is toxicity, but the TERF standpoint of seeing all trans women as potential rapists is totally fine. It's them making the conversation toxic, not us. Oh no. All men are potential rapists, full stop. The vast, vast majority of people who have masculinity also have toxic masculinity. The two almost always come hand in hand. I already addressed why it is that it doesn't make sense to criticise The Guardian for not airing its issues. I will point out, though, these are the people who will never stop insisting that you haven't spoken to trans people and haven't listened to trans people and haven't actually looked at trans people's arguments. And yet, these people also seem to unironically believe that trans, uh, gender critical people don't actually have any issues with trans people. Dare I say, it's not my job to educate you. Lol, why is it that transphobes always imply that their views represent all women? When Sean compares transphobes with concerns to people opposing desegregation, that comes with the implicit assumption that the person, that the people with concerns are the racists in the analogy, as in not all white people, but just the racist ones. But then my argument very much assumes that not all women are gender critical. If we take Sean's analogy, all white people are white. Some white people are concerned about black people. All women are women. Some women are concerned about trans people. So when I said that Sean cast women as segregation era white people, that was correct. If I said Sean cast women as white people who support segregation, that would be false. But that's not what I said. Also, do you think that trans women don't face misogyny or that trans men do? Because it seems like whether someone has a vagina or not isn't going to affect whether some sexist is sexist towards them. Would it not only matter to the sexist whether they perceive them as a woman? I already addressed this point. You complain about being misconstrued. Sean isn't comparing women to segregation whites. Sean is comparing women who are against trans people being in their spaces to segregation white people. And he is comparing trans people to black people. I've already addressed this. Actually, Sean is comparing all women to segregation era white people by casting gender critical women as segregationists, since in both cases they were a part of the larger group. Your statement of people with penises is reductionist, which makes your earlier complaint about reductionism even earlier even more hypocritical. And this also does not include trans women who have undergone surgery. The saying goes, don't have your mind so open that shit cuts in. Thank you. You exemplify this perfectly. Thank you. <laughs> Men without penises think you might need a little more nuance in your reductionism. And yes, you are an effective transphobe. You should do a relook and see if you start recycling conservative arguments. At least I explained why Sean was reductionist. Just calling something reductionist without explaining why really doesn't achieve much. And finally, we end with the best comment. This dude, who's never seen someone besides his mother naked before in his life. I don't know what exactly this is supposed to be in reference to. Is it in reference to my stance on abstinence, or my anti-porn stance, or is it implying that I'm lacking in sexual prowess? I'm not sure. More importantly, what does it have to do with anything? 
deadass calling himself gender critical the exact same way racists call themselves race realists. The exact same way, you know, using sound with my tongue to produce words, which in turn produces sentences that convey meaning. Literally identical. You are on the wrong side of history. Do some research and reevaluate your opinions. Nobody will hate you for being wrong. Yes, because if there's one thing that former atheist, now Christian, former socialist, now liberal, former anti-feminist, now pro-feminist, former Islamophile, now critic of Islam, former trans-identity advocate, believer, now gender-critical feminist, King al Farazon is famous for, if there's one thing I'm famous for, only one thing, it's being unwilling to reevaluate my opinions and change my mind on issues. Also, guys, thanks again for 300 subscribers. In my video celebrating 300 subscribers, some guy commented, LMAO, you know you've destroyed any possible possible chance of you being respected on left tube now. What a loser. Thank you. This is my favorite comment because it's basically just straight up admitting that, that total conformity is the only thing that earns you respect from these people. Also, it's kind of embarrassing that they're not even considering the possibility of being able to change my mind. If I did change my mind, which is actually a possibility given my track record, then would I still not be accepted? Even if I did change my mind, why would I want to be part of a group of people that attacked me so much just for being wrong about something? Not for being hateful, not for wanting to hurt anybody, just for being wrong. That's why I'm starting my own political niche group called my channel, uh, currently 25 strong. Sorry, <laughs> currently 325 strong. Yes, we are now a quarter of the way to 400 subscribers. I mean, not, you know what I mean? Obviously, we're three quarters of the way to 400 subscribers. We're, we're a quarter of the way of the distance between 300 and 400. So remember to leave your suggestion below for what I should do when I hit the big 400. So if you aren't subscribed, subscribe. And if you aren't subscribe, if you are subscribed, share. And if you like this video, like. And if you hated this video, dislike. And if you disagreed with this video, but you can appreciate the fact that I'm arguing in earnest and not trying to hurt or attack anybody, then comment below letting me know why you disagree. And do, do so respectfully. Uh, speaking of respect, I've decided I'm going to censor the word tur from now on. So if you include it in your comments, I'll reply saying, hey, can you censor the slur, please? If you remove the slur, then that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to have to delete your comment. I don't want to do this, but it just seems like toxicity is becoming a real problem. This also applies to any other slur, but I don't think most people will use other slurs. Um, one final point. I think I'm going to leave a link to the gender critical thread where I'll post this on Reddit. So you can maybe talk there, because I think that's a slightly better community than the YouTube comment section. I'm not sure if that's totally kosher with the mods, so I might have to run that by them. But if they are okay with it, then I'll put it in the description below. Oh my god. That was so long. How long have I been recording for?